Frontier Fighters. Frontier fighters, daring, intrepid sons of courage whose high sense of duty made them lay down their lives that the West might not perish. In 1868, General William Tecumseh Sherman procured Chief Red Cloud's signature to a treaty. The Indians were to withdraw to a large reservation in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So vast was the place where the Red Men were to have their home that it was bounded by the Yellowstone on the north, the Missouri on the east, the North Platte on the south, and the Big Horn Mountains on the west. Said the great chief Red Cloud in council, It is well we sign treaty with pale faces. They make bigger medicine than red men. Reservation good for Indian. Much buffalo, deer, antelope, elk, bighorn sheep, grizzly bear. Rivers are filled with fish and trees with singing birds. There we will live in peace. Let pale faces use the plow, and like women, sow and reap. Braves and hunters, we will be to the end, and the great spirit will look after his children. It is well, my brothers. Red Cloud spoke with a tongue of peace, but sitting bull, crazy horse, rain in the face, gall, and black moon, all the younger chiefs in their own council scoffed at such a plan. Said sitting bull, The white man has always been a liar. Today he gives the Indian a reservation. Tomorrow he takes it away from him. Red Cloud is old. The blood in his veins is turned to water. He would huddle close to the campfire with the women and children. He would be a slave and content. But not so with the young man. The brave is a brave. The hunter is a hunter. And he who would take the white man's scalp must wait and watch. The first Indians to enter the reservation were infuriated when they read the following military regulations posted and signed by General Sheridan. All Indians, when on their proper reservations, are under exclusive control and jurisdiction of their agents. Outside the well-defined limits of the reservation, they are under the original and exclusive jurisdiction of the military authority. And as a rule, it will be considered... Hostile! It is as I said. Now the white man shall snap his fingers, and the Indian must run and do his bidding. We are not free. That is also as I said. But I also say this, that the great spirit made me, and he did not make me an agency man. The 
treaty with Red Cloud said that all Indians must be on the reservation by January 1st, 1876. But several thousand of them were too clever to slip their heads into what they were certain was a noose. Then came the discovery of gold in the Black Hills. And thousands of adventurers, renegades, gold-hungry wanderers began overrunning the Black Hills and overflowed into the Indian reservations. And now the Indian was certain that the white man was a liar. The contract was broken. Treaties were not for the protection of the red man. Sitting Bull and his restless braves retaliated by stealing horses, burning houses, and threatening the lives of all who opposed them. The authorities in Washington, hoping to quiet the Indians, invited Red Cloud and the peace-talking chiefs to the White House to meet the great white chief, President Grant. While this was going on, General Crook, a famous Indian fighter, arrived in the Dakotas in March. Now, Colonel Reynolds, it's my opinion that if we stage a surprise attack on the Indians now, we'll dishearten them. And in the twinkling of an eye, we'll have a general surrender. Well, the Indians are never on the warpath in the winter, sir. All we'll find in camp will be women and children. The braves will be out hunting. I know Indians, Colonel, and that's the plan I shall give orders to follow out. Yes, sir. Take six troops of cavalry, and by forced marchers, you will be at the camp by dawn. If the braves resist, kill them. But every teepee in that village must be burned to the ground and their stores demolished. Yes, sir. But if you'll excuse me, I feel this is the wrong thing to do. Colonel, the secret of Indian fighting is match fire with fire. If my orders are followed out to the letter, this is the last we'll ever hear of an Indian uprising in the Dakotas or Montana. General Crook's orders were followed out to the letter. But the Indians, instead of being subdued, became more infuriated. And within a week, open rebellion had broken out. Under the leadership of Sitting Bull, every tribe went on the warpath. And suddenly, the tribes were no longer disorganized or scattered, but welded under the masterful leadership of Sitting Bull. All talk of peace ended in Washington, and orders were given by General Sheridan to create the Yellowstone Expedition. A thousand men under General Crook were to advance from Fort Laramie. General Terry, with a similar force, was to march westward, and General Gibbon, with 500 men, was to come down from the northwest. General Custer, with a mounted cavalry of 600 strong, was ordered to investigate a rumor that there was a massing of Indians somewhere up the Rosebud in Montana. Custer ordered his scouts to ride ahead and reconnoiter. Captain Benteen, I think we should make short work of this if the scouts bring back the kind of report I'm hoping for. General Custer, I think our force of 600 is far too small to attempt a pitched battle with a Sioux. Benteen, this will be the lightest kind of a skirmish, mark my words. What do you say, Major Reno? General, I'm inclined to trust your judgment entirely. Any man who's won the fame that you have as an Indian fighter? (laughs) (laughs) I'm not so much afraid of my soldiers, these Indians, as they are of my long yellow hair. Because I've never been even grazed by one of their bullets, they think my yellow hair must be a charm. (laughs) Ah, Here come the scouts. We'll soon know what the plan of attack will be. General Custer, I have the honor to report that the enemy has set up their teepees on the west bank of the Little Bighorn. I can see only one Indian village. Just as I thought. That's all, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Now to make short work of this, here is the plan. We'll trap the Indians by strategy. My troops will be divided into three divisions. Divide your troops, General? Of course. You, Benteen, will strike for the upper end of the Indian encampment. I'll take five companies and drive straight at the village. Major Reno will operate midway between the two forces. That's the plan of attack. The backbone of the rebellion will be broken, and the Indians will find peace and contentment on their reservation. Your orders shall be carried out, General Custer, to the letter. General, in line of duty, one always obeys the orders of his superior officer. But what if, just by chance, sir, you should meet a force ten times larger than you think? If such a force should be met, Captain, my men and I will do our duty as soldiers and gentlemen of the 7th Cavalry. way did General George A. Custer fatally divide his troops and unwittingly took up the march to his doom. Sitting Bull and his warriors no longer fled from the Pale Faces, but sought them out. And it was here, in the southeastern section of Montana, that he massed thousands of braves. 
Between the little bighorn and the bighorn, there were swarms of well-armed, magnificently disciplined Sioux, Cheyennes, and their allies, decked in feathers, streaked with paint, and thirsting for the blood of their longtime enemy. And down the valley, only a few miles away, rode a thin line of men, clad in buckskin and blue. Captain Benteen, through miscalculation, went wide of the village. Reno was repulsed against the south end, and Custer, ignorant of the sudden whirl of events, dashed full into the powerful ranks of the red man. General Custer, look! Thousands of redskins! We're in a trap! We'll soon get out of it if we are. Uh, they're surrounding us. North, east, south, west. There they come for us! Those red devils! Retreat! 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 Can't be long now until we get some help from Benteen and Reno. Help has got to come. How many men have we lost? Fifty, sir. My brother Tom, my brother-in-law, Captain Calhoun, my nephew, Otty Reed. Are they all right? General, they're all dead. Yeah. God rest their souls. We must fight on till help comes. We must fight on. Fight on, men! Fight on! I sent a messenger for reinforcements. Don't give an inch! Fight! Fight! They're getting closer, General. How's the ammunition holding up? Going pretty fast, sir. The heels of the ammunition stampeded or shot. The fighting began, each man had 50 rounds of peace on them. Help must come here. Must! Devils are picking our men off at long range. They must have stolen hundreds of high-powered rifles. Well, we have carved pines and revolvers. Uh, here comes your Indian scout, Curly, sir. Clean it and dress up like a Sioux. General Custer, men die more each minute. Early not leave until fight or loss. Then he makes you up a Sioux warrior, and you escape the fort. Curly love his white chief, General Custer. I live if my men live, Curly. I die if my men die. That's the way of a soldier. Your carbine's empty, General. Take this one. Fire away, men. Make every ah! bullet count. I'm out of ammunition, sir. If I've emptied this revolver, I'm through fighting unless I use my bare hands. No, General. Four men dead, but 25. 25 living out of 112. Fight on, men. Fight on. While there's a man of you alive, we're not defeated. Oh, and it's all people past on horse. Be looking for you, General. And I'm looking for him. <laughs> The men are all down but eight now, sir. And I... Uh, all down but seven. May the great spirit make us meet on the happy hunt. Now. Kill them all! Kill! 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 Kill yellow hair! Kill yellow hair! Kill. It's over. God have mercy on the souls of all of us. Fight! Fight while there's a man of your left! I am giving them the last bullet in my carbine! Fight! Thus died General George A. Custer, fighting to his last bullet and his last breath. He did not fight Indians because he hated them, but... In a day when there were frontiers to be guarded and frontiers to be won for civilization and posterity, he did his duty as he saw it. And on the scrolls of time, General George Custer and those ill-fated 112 officers and men will be honored by every man, woman, and child for centuries to come as heroes all, frontier fighters. <laughs> 